So let's have a look at how GeoGebra handles missing data. Uh, in order to compare that with uh, non-missing data, let's plot a scatter diagram for the clean data, which is in my first two columns. You can see that I've got in, in my GeoGebra spreadsheet, I've got the cleaned data with all the missing rows deleted. I've got the data with what has it came out of the sheet with the uh, the missing data represented by double dots, and I've got the same version of that, except this time the uh, the missing data is represented by an empty cell. And uh, does something slightly different in each case, which we'll have a look at. First of all, if I select these two columns, uh, I can draw a scatter diagram in several ways. I could go to the uh, two variable regression analysis. That's probably a good way to do that because it shows you what it's going to do. I'm going to tell it to use a header as a title and I can see that 54 is matching up with 0 0.5, which it should do. And that also happens in the other data over here, but in the other ones, I've got some problems in advance. So this one is just doing what I expect. If I analyze it, it gives me a scatter diagram, which does look like the previous scatter diagrams we see. If I click on the statistics option, I can see that the correlation coefficient is about 0.322, same as before. So that's doing what I expected. And I'm just going to put that by clicking on this little export option, copy it to graphics view. And there it is on my graphics view. I can change the size. I'm just going to change the color and size to make this uh, recognizable. This is the first one we, properly, uh, we, we tried. Make the points a bit smaller, maybe. I can make crosses, whatever you like. So there's my correct scatter diagram. Let's see what happens when I try this with uh, one of the other data sets. So this is the one with the double dots in place of the missing data. And if I click on two variable regression analysis again for this, first of all, you can see that it's recognized that there are some text values in there. Uh, first of all, I'm going to tell it to use the header again. It looks like 58 is matched with a piece of text called dot dot, but 54 looks like it's matched with 0 0.5, which is fine, I think, except when I click on analyze, we get a scatter diagram which is definitely looking different. It's a bit of a puzzle what it's actually doing. If I click on the statistics option, you can see my correlation coefficient is 0 0.025. That's different from what it was. So something is wrong. This is not doing what I wanted it to do. What is it doing? Well, it's not obvious, uh, but if I copy it to graphics view, you can see, first of all, that it's different from those red crosses. And you can also see the list it's created up here, which gives us a clue. The correct one is matching 54 with 0 0.5. There it is. This one is matching 58 with 0 0.5. Well, the 58 turned up there, and the 0 0.5 turned up there. So what it's doing is it's finding the first element in that list and matching it to the first one that's a number in that list, which is there. So we should then get 43 matched with 36.3, and that is exactly what's happening. This is just wrong. It's matching the wrong bit of data. That's from one country, and that's from another country. So this scatter diagram I've just plotted is just wrong. Uh, and if you are just doing it quickly without paying too much attention, that would be easy to miss. Uh, it is important to recognize that we can dodge this. I'm going to delete that list because that's wrong. And we can still use this. Uh, if I, instead of clicking on two variable regression analysis, I right click on these two columns and create a list of points. It's going to do a couple of things which we should talk about. First of all, it's created all the points and they're exactly where the scatter diagram should be. So it turns out if you do it like that by creating a list of points, which you could also do from here, a list of points, it does dodge all the missing bits of data. It recognizes it can't plot a point of 58 with a blank, or rather with a double dot. So it doesn't. It only plots the ones where it has two values. Uh, so it's got the correct scatter diagram. There are two things to worry about. Firstly, everything's been labeled, which is a bit annoying. I can turn that off by selecting all the points and just getting rid of the labels. Um, in future, I can stop that happening by clicking on options and clicking on labeling and saying, don't label new objects. I'll do that. That'll be useful in a moment. The other problem is it's quite a little bit more difficult to change the color of all these points because if I select the list, it doesn't actually let me change all the points in the list. To do that, I have to select all the points. Um, for now, I'm just going to delete them because they are the same as the previous red list. So I'm going to delete that list and I'm going to delete all the points we just made. Okay, so you can make it work even with the double dots there. Let's see what happens with the blank data. I'm going to select those two columns. I'm going to try a two variable regression analysis. This time it's looking like, uh, this time it's telling me what it's doing. It's matching 58 with 0 0.5, and I check my data. 58 does not match with 0 0.5. 54 should match with 0 0.5. So this is already telling me it's doing something wrong, which is helpful. Um, it's doing a slightly better job at uh, dealing with those blanks than this double dot business was, which looked like it was doing okay, but this is clearly wrong, and if I analyze it, we get the same wrong scatter graph as before, the same wrong correlation coefficient. I'm not even going to put this on the screen because it's just wrong. Interestingly though, you can again make this work if you select these two, and instead of uh, clicking on two variable regression analysis, you create a list of points. Let's do it the other way around this time. List of points, let's make them dependent. Uh, there we go. Actually, they've turned up on the screen again. They've covered up my red dots. This is now correct. And because I actually turned the labeling option off before, they haven't been labeled. Uh, but this time, if I want to select them all to change their colors, I'd have to select all the points by clicking on points there. And then I could change them to green or something like that. 
So you can make it work in Jojoba, and to be honest, I think Jojoba does a better job at dealing with errors and of missing data. But as is the case with all of these software packages, it's better to be very explicit about what you mean and only give it the data that you know is correct, and don't rely on what it might or might not do with data that it doesn't know how to interpret. So leave missing data in at your own peril, and at least know what it's likely to do if you do leave it in there. Hopefully that's helped you understand what Jojoba does with missing data.